When we talk asset pricing, we're trying to figure out why investments give certain returns. For ages, simpler models like CAPM, the Capital Asset Pricing Model, were the main game in town. They were, yeah. But they turned out to be, well, insufficient. They just couldn't explain the complexities we see in the real world. So researchers needed something else. Exactly. They pivoted towards what are called characteristic-based factors. It's a more practical approach. Instead of trying to predict every single stock, you group assets by common traits like company size, value metrics, momentum. Things like that. Right. And there are good reasons for this shift. One, it tackles the huge dimensionality problem, you know, dealing with thousands of assets versus maybe a dozen factors. Much easier. Makes sense. Two, those single factor models like CAPM, they just weren't capturing the full picture of risk premiums. And three, these characteristic-based portfolios. They seem to be better at actually capturing the priced risks, the risks investors get compensated for. So it's like focusing on the main currents instead of every tiny ripple. That's a great analogy, yeah. But even with these factors, there's still this theoretical ideal, isn't there? A kind of gold standard benchmark. Ah, uh, yes. You're talking about the mean variance efficient portfolio, the MVE. That's the theoretical holy grail. It's the portfolio that gives you the absolute maximum expected return for a given level of risk. Or, looking at it the other way, the minimum risk for a given return. And it prices everything perfectly. In theory, yes. It sits on what we call the efficient frontier, the ultimate goal. The big challenge, though, is actually building it in practice. Okay, so if MVE is the, let's say, the North Star, but it's hard to reach, where do these practical characteristic factors fall short? And I guess this is where unpriced risk really enters the picture, right? Precisely. This is the core idea. Unpriced components are these parts of a factor's return, even a well-known factor, that have zero expected excess return. None. But they still add to its volatility. 